In this video, we show you how to configure an I.O. Link master port with a Profinet capable PLC to use device validation and data storage. By activating this function, the I.O. Link device is automatically checked and parameterized by the I.O. Link master. We use the same setup as in the How to I.O. Link integration video. Only the I.O. Link sensor connected to port 1 of the master has been replaced by a TN7511 temperature sensor with a larger display. As shown in the programming software, the current sensor data is transferred to the S7 PLC, which is connected to the IO Link Master via Profinet. If you have any questions, please take a look at the IO Link integration video. To configure port number one of the IO Link Master, to which the temperature sensor is connected, we log out and open the device view in TIA Portal. We select port number one, and below the device view, we can see the module parameters for the port under the Properties and General tabs. The mode and cycle time parameters are preset and can be used as they are. As a first step, we need to set the next parameter, validation and data storage. Let's take a look at an excerpt from the IO Link Master's operating manual to explain the five available options. To do this, we go to the IFM homepage and use the search function to find the online data sheet for the AL1100IO Link Master. Select the download area and scroll down to the operating instructions. Under point 9.1.7 IO Link Ports, setting device validation and data storage we find an explanation of the available options. The first option, no check and clear, allows any IO link device to be connected to the port and read. This means that there is no device check and no data storage. The next two options, type compatible device, can be used to check that the correct sensor is connected. This can be done with the new 1.1 standard and even with the first IO link standard 1.0. Only the device type is checked without any kind of data storage. The validation check for the new IO Link 1.1 standard can be extended with the data storage options restore or backup and restore. The restore function saves a parameter set once and automatically transfers it to a new device with factory settings. The backup and restore function also saves any parameter changes made in the meantime. When a new unit is connected with factory settings, the saved parameter set is transferred. For this demonstration, we will select the backup and restore function. To get everything up and running, we also need to change the vendor and device ID for port 1. This ID is used by the controller to do device validation and see if the correct sensor is connected. The information can be found in the IODD PDF file for the TN7511 temperature sensor we are using. Once again, we use the search function on the IFM homepage to access the online datasheet or download area of the sensor. We find the vendor ID 310 for IFM and the device ID 583 for the TN7511 temperature sensor on the first page of the IODD. Back in the TIA portal programming software, we set 310 for the vendor and 583 for the device ID. After downloading the configuration to the PLC, we go online and check that everything is okay. Now it's time to have a look at the effects of these settings. First, we check the device validation of the master. If the correct sensor is connected as shown here, the corresponding status LED on the port will light up continuously in green. Now we disconnect the M12 plug and connect a TN2415 instead of a TN7511. If an incorrect device with a different vendor or device ID is used, this will be detected by the master. The process values will not be read out and the status LED will change to red. Only when the correct temperature sensor is reconnected will the LED color of port number one change back to green. The master accepts the wired sensor and reads out the process values again. 
Let's now move on to the parameter storage function. As we can see, the current temperature value is displayed in green with the unit degrees Fahrenheit. This parameter is set with a green display and the unit degrees Fahrenheit is stored in the IO link master due to the backup and restore function. We disconnect the sensor and connect it to a separate power supply without connection to the master or controller. To restore the factory settings, we use the push buttons on the device. As we can see, the sensor display is red by default and the unit is degrees Celsius. Now we reconnect this sensor to the IO link port of the master that we have configured and see what happens. The master recognizes that it is a factory configured device and overwrites the stored parameter set. When the transfer is successful, the sensor display changes to green and the unit is degrees Fahrenheit. The new temperature sensor is now parameterized in the same way as the previous unit. It is important to note that the restore function only works if the connected sensor has the factory settings. Otherwise, the current parameter settings of the connected sensor will be stored in the port, which corresponds to the backup function. Thank you for watching. See you next time.